Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Uh, I do apologize if the, uh, the video is slightly choppy. It's, uh, I'm, I'm having to record this in QuickTime right now because uh, Keynote has a uh, catastrophic error in its export function right now. So, you know, that's life. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts for a first year chemistry student, and that's the concept of a mole. What the mole is going to allow us to do is take uh, the idea of ratios uh, of individual molecules or atoms and then scale that all the way up to something we can actually measure in the laboratory. And we'll see how that works. It's not that different than what we talked about last time. And so a mole certainly would help us out here. And so last time we talked about the idea of measuring out like a thousand or a million jelly beans. Um, and you could do that by, again, figuring out the average mass of a jelly bean and then scaling that up, you know, a, th a million times or a thousand times. Um, and, and the same process holds true today. It's just uh, if you're going to do that for atoms, you need a much bigger number. And so the number chemists came up with is not a million. Uh, it's actually 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. <laughs> all, all, all a mole is is a gigantic, absurdly huge number. Um, I, I call it the chemist dozen. It's, it's, it's nothing different than a dozen. So, you know, don't think of it as something like a volume. Don't think of it as something like a weight because neither one of those is correct. It's really just a gigantic number, all right? Um, and so if you were to have a mole of carbon atoms, uh, it would fit in the palm of your hand easily. Uh, that's how small atoms are. Uh, but if you were to have a mole of anything else, again, it just gets absurd. Uh, I saw a calculation where if you had a mole of drops of water, um, it would take 134,000 years for that water to go over Niagara Falls at the rate it does every day. Or if you had a mole of uh, dollars, uh, uh, everybody on Earth could spend a million dollars an hour for their entire life, and you'd only use up one percent of the money. And uh, and uh, the Earth, I think, I, I think, uh, is is a mole of tons. <laughs> so if you had a mole of tons, uh, um, no, if you had a mole of tons, I think that's one percent of the Earth's mass. So you would need a hundred uh, moles of tons. <laughs> but anyway, they're gigantically huge numbers. Uh, but if you're dealing with atoms and molecules, if you had a mole of water molecules, again, that could easily fit in the palm of your hand. And so that's all it is. So whenever you get confused about what a mole is, just swap out dozen and, and say, well, what would I do if this was a dozen? And then do the same thing for moles. Just a gigantic number. It's based off actually the uh, number of atoms that would be uh, of carbon in 12 grams of the isotope carbon-12. Historically, that's where it was based. Um, but anyway, it's just a gigantic number. That's it. Don't get confused. And so, uh, you know, in chemistry, we're going to use it for our ratios. So just like if I had one elephant and one peanut, everybody's happy. If I had a dozen elephants and a dozen peanuts, everybody's happy. If I had a mole of elephants and a mole of peanuts, all the elephants would be happy, but the earth would be destroyed. So, and this is also called Avogadro's number. Avogadro Amadeo came up, or Amadeo Avogadro came up with the concept of uh, uh, equal volumes of gases under equal conditions have the same amount. Um, and no one really gave him too much heed from that uh, during his lifetime. But after his lifetime, people realized he was really on to something. And the idea of um, equal amounts was actually uh, a big deal. And so when they actually came up with the number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, it wasn't a number uh, uh, Avogadro had come up with himself, but he came up with the concept of equal amounts of different substances. So in tribute to him, because no one really gave him the credit during his life that he was uh, uh, afforded, um, they named it Avogadro's number. And so you can use it just like any other conversion. Uh, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units, or you could just take 6.02 if you want to, if you only want three sig figs. But anyway, so if you were going to count to Avogadro's number, you'd need a million times longer than the universe has existed. You'd, you'd need a long time. So Anyway, you're really only going to convert from moles to atoms or molecules as sort of a mathematical curiosity mathematical activity, like we'll show some examples of it here. I could convert from atoms of gold to, uh, mo uh, or moles of gold to atoms of gold. I can convert from moles of copper to atoms of copper. You'll notice you'll get the same answer either time because again, this is substance independent. It doesn't really matter that this is gold or copper because I'm going from moles to amount, just like if I was going from dozens to amount. Whether you had a dozen donuts or a dozen elephants or a dozen schmegalamunga, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you've only got 12 of them. So that's, that's why, again, this is all substance independent right now. And you can go the other way. You can go from numbers to moles if you'd like to also. 
Now you should, you should certainly be comfortable with this conversion, uh, but it's not something that's really laboratory practical. You, you really don't care that much about the atoms, you just care about the ratio being the same on a scale that you can measure. And so if you counted for a million years at one number per second, you'd get to that number, give or take. Um, and you'd be uh, that far along, <laughs> which isn't that far along. So again, it's a gigantic number. I think I've hopefully made that pretty clear. <laughs> um, it's just a number though, so don't get freaked out. Now where it's really handy is the idea of converting to, uh, to a mass. Uh, we, again, we talked about the idea of you could figure out how many grams of uh, jelly beans you would need to get a million jelly beans. And we could figure out how many uh, grams of any element we would need to get a mole of that element. It's actually the atomic mass. It's already on the periodic table. And so if we want these one to one or one to two ratios or five to seven ratios of different elements, um, we don't have to count out enough atoms to get us there. We can actually measure out the mass of a mole and that will get us the same ratio. So we could actually measure out the amount so that we'd have equivalent elephants and peanuts. Um, uh, just like we could do for any other elements. Donuts to uh, coffee, cups of coffee. <laughs> it wouldn't matter what the substance is, you'd have equivalent amounts. And this is actually neat because it ends up being the atomic mass of the element. So uh, AMUs or Daltons per atom is actually the same numeric value as grams per mole. And I encourage you to kind of put that on paper and try to figure out why that ends up being the same thing. But be, be very comfortable in that kind of cyclical cycle between grams, moles, atoms, and AMUs. You should be able to convert between all four to any of the other four. Um, so uh, you might want to pause the video and sit down and try to work that out, factor your label. Remember, um, two of those are mass uh, substance independent and two of those are substance dependent. And so if we are going from uh, grams of carbon to moles of carbon, we would of course need to look on the periodic table, just like if I said, hey, I have a dozen elephants, how many elephants is that? You could say 12, but if I said, hey, you have a dozen elephants, how many pounds is that? You'd have to say, well, I don't know, how big's the elephant? Um, so some things are substance dependent. So we'll finish up with three conversions that are substance dependent. Moles of gold, now we'll go to grams of gold. It makes sense that uh, each mole is about 200 grams. I looked that up on the periodic table. Uh, and so that would be about one pound of gold. Uh, if I have 25 grams of sulfur, that's not quite a mole, because I know a mole is 32 grams, because I have my periodic table here. So that'd be a little less, sig figs being accounted for. And you could go from grams to atoms. It's not technically a one-step problem, unless you want to be clever. You can go from grams to moles and then moles to atoms. That's a two-step problem. But of course, you could do it in one step and collapse it together. Um, or you could do it in two steps going from grams to Daltons and then Daltons to atoms, again, if you want to be clever. Um, so next time what we're going to do is we're going to take the idea of grams per mole for elements and then scale that all the way up to uh, figuring out for any compound. Um, back of the envelope, it's very easily, these very easy. If you want to show your work, it takes a little bit more time. So that's all we're going to do for today. Uh, again, maybe you've noticed no difference in the quality of this video. Hopefully you haven't. Um, and then, uh, uh, come on, Apple, fix Keynote. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching.